Monday morning. We'll call it the uh, calm before the storm. Yeah, I'll put the chances of storms any point by 2 o'clock this afternoon, so be prepared for that. And the biggest threat for this evening, thunderstorms in the They gonna rock us, they gonna get in our way They wanna block us, they wanna mock us They gonna regret it all day Hey, when we call the army You know they pulling up right away They gonna stop the squad We see the finish a mile away, ah We see the finish a mile away We see the finish a mile away, ah We see the finish a mile away We see the finish a mile away, ah When we call the army You know they pulling up right away They gonna stop the squad We see the finish a mile away, ah What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. In case you haven't heard, Moment just released their first ever anamorphic adapter for bigger lenses and bigger cameras. And I had the honor to be the host of the Kickstarter as well as edit and shoot part of the campaign. So in this video, I wanna show you some of the behind the scenes and kind of just walk you through my experience using the adapter as well as just talking about the scene that you just watched. So uh, let's get right into it. I just want to say right out the gate, this is the easiest anamorphic adapter I've ever used. The front of the anamorphic adapter is an 82 millimeter filter thread and the rear of it is a 67 filter thread. I personally use my Zeiss Milvis 50 mil 1.4 and that has a 67 front filter thread which connects directly to the back of the anamorphic adapter. And now once the adapter is finally on the whole lens and everything else, the easiest thing ever is how to align it. If you haven't used an adapter before, you need to align the vertical oval so you can have the proper image coming out of the camera. Before you would have to unscrew some parts or you have to make sure you have a bayonet that's tight enough to make sure it's in place. There's a lot of just different scenarios where the ease of use of making sure your alignment is correct would be kind of iffy. But in this case, they've engineered, moment that is, has engineered a simple button that you push and you just rotate the lens. My Lord, that is so simple. And action. Whoa, I think I got it. <laughs> Let's try this way. Yeah, keep throwing the balls like that. Now, mentioning about the weight of the anamorphic adapter, you will notice it. Um, I would say it's just about the same weight as my 50 mil Zeiss, and that's a very hefty lens in itself. And this is not a bad thing, but this is something that you need to know. I did use a uh, lens support, my universal lens support from Wooden Camera, and I, I just do that for extra security because one, you're attaching it to a lens, which is attached to, in my case, the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro, and that has an EF mount. And EF mounts aren't always, you know, the most stable. So knowing that, I just made sure I had the whole system kind of rigged up properly. Now, I saw this question a lot, and um, a lot of people assume that this is going to be a dual focus. It's not dual focus. This, this is going to be single focus. So what that means basically is you would set your taking lens, which is the lens that's attached to the camera, to infinity. And then you attach the adapter in front of it. And now the adapter has a built-in rangefinder, which allows you to have just one single focus solution. So as you focus the adapter, you're focusing your whole image. And then make sure just to read what's on the Kickstarter page. That will give you all the information you need to know. Now what's nice about anamorphic adapters is that you can put it on different lenses to get different looks. In this case, I only use the Zeiss Mobis 50mm 1.4, like I said before, on the Pocket 6K Pro. Uh, it's a much more modern lens, uh, clinical some would say, which I would agree. But that certainly changes once you add the adapter. Now the first thing I notice is the astigmatism, basically how the background is being rendered. That's the one thing I love about anamorphic lenses no matter what the squeeze factor is, is that it introduces imperfection. Basically, it dirties up your image, as we would say. It being one through three, sure, is not the strongest squeeze out of the bunch, but pairing this lens 
with other lenses that have a certain look like the Helios 442 or the Canon FDs or even the Leicas just adds to the character of the overall image. Now I was very happy to see amber or gold flares because I prefer, I, I mean, honestly, I do prefer more warmer flares versus the blue flare. Uh, they both respectively have their use cases, but I would pick up a warmer flare more, more often than a blue flare. Now I didn't notice any major ghosting. Uh, it flared when it was supposed to when bright light sources were in the frame. Uh, but that could just be the behavior of the Milvis and its coatings. Aberrations do appear as expected and an overall softness to the image, which is not a bad thing. That's, the, that's part of the character of Anamorphic. Now for a lot of the action shots when we're on the basketball court, uh, they are out of focus and that's more user error. So there's a distinction there. Um, I was hovering around F2, which is difficult to pull focus when there's a lot of movement going on, but that was a conscious choice. Uh, I suffered a little, uh, I think some of the images suffered for that choice, but it is what it is. Now stopping down to f2.8 would allow you to get a little more deep focus or even f4, but um, you can shoot however you want to, it's, it's how creative you want to be. And that's, that's what I, and that was the choice I made. Overall, I do want this lens in my kit. I own a few other anamorphic lenses, uh, full on anamorphic lenses. But it is, it is nice having an adapter because let's say you have a range of lenses that you want to adapt to to have all an anamorphic look and so now you don't have to go out and buy a whole new set of anamorphics or rent them out. You have this one adapter you can put on a 28, you can put on 35, 50, uh, and uh, whatever longer focal lengths and you'll have a cohesive anamorphic look. Sure there might be some vignetting on the wider lenses. We do recommend 35 on Super 35 and uh, 50 on a full frame but experiment right like you can break the rules that's what's the whole point of fil <laughs> filmmaking. You break the rules to how you want to create your aesthetic but um, but again like you now you have your own set of an anamorphic prime set basically and this even works on zooms that's just kind of crazy so all that being said i hope you enjoyed this video um again make sure to check out the links in the description below and i'll catch you guys on the next one i'm out see you